Hi everybody! Hey there! Welcome back to LDRS Creative. We're in studio and I think it's Thursday night. Is it Thursday night, Alan? Hello! <laughs> I know he's there. Um, is it Thursday? Okay, it's Thursday. The days are just going so fast it's crazy. Um, so yeah, it's a Thursday night here in the uh, LDRS Creative Studio, aka the Hunt Household. Um, and uh, we're going to be doing some Halloween stuff tonight, so that's pretty cool. We're going to be working with the pirouette pattern templates. So if you already have your pirouette pattern templates, then you know what we're talking about. If not, I'm going to give you a quick little once over on those. And we are going to, we're going to go through that process and I'm going to show you how to create a Halloween card with one of the brand new uh, pirouette pattern uh, stamp and stamp sets and the dies. Uh, that we have in the new collection. So we have a trick or treat collection, or I'm sorry, a trick or treat set uh, that is um, in, uh, what is it called? It's actually called trick or treat. My gosh, I'm all over the place tonight. <laughs> um, anyway, we have two of them. They're, they're, they're available now in stores everywhere. Uh, so we have the trick or treat set, and then we also have the peace and joy for Christmas. So um, if we have time tonight, we're gonna do something with the peace and joy one. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so anyway, but welcome everybody. It is so great to have you here. I hope you guys had a fantastic week. Um, and um, yeah, if I seem a little bit frazzled, which I absolutely am, it's been a it's been a, a very crazy time since we last met. There's been a lot going on. Um, and um, my son, our son, actually started school as many kids have been doing all across the country. And he's a senior, so that has really thrown me for a loop. <laughs> I can't believe that my baby is a senior. Um, and then today we actually met with uh, with a photographer to talk about uh, senior photos. So we, I just got back from that just before coming in here to do this. So my head is all over the place <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I'm feeling old. So, and my baby is gonna be moving out soon. We're on the college hunt. Oh my gosh. Anyway, alrighty. So we're gonna be talking about these guys today. And um, I don't have packaging for this. Am I, this <laughs> I don't know where my packaging is. I couldn't find it. But this is my set of the uh, Trick or Treat uh, Pirouette stamps. It's, it's a six by eight stamp. Alan's looking right now. He's like, do you have another one? Is, you know, I'm not sure. It, it might, I think it's one of the samples that we got in for the design team and, and it didn't have packaging. So, um, and uh, so anyway, so we have that. So we're going to go overhead as soon as Alan gets back. That yeah, that's it. Perfect. So we're going to go to the overhead as soon as Alan gets back to the control system. <laughs> That's how this is going to go. You know what I don't have, Alan, is my glasses. They are way over there. Yes, there. I'm pointing there. Right in front of you. You can almost see through them. Goodness gracious. Here they are. You can see them. You know, it, that's one thing. You, you get the ones that you can't really see very well, so you can see through them. Then you can't find them anywhere. It just cracks me up. Okay, so today we're going to be working with these babies here. This is a definite yes. We're going to be working with these absolutely. Um, if we have some time, we're going to do something with the Christmas one, but definitely the Halloween one because, well, that day comes before Christmas, and I really love Halloween, um, and I love these sets. So uh, the pirouette, if you're not familiar with the pirouette, the pirouette is a set of templates that allows you to make beautiful reeds like this, as well as spirals and background, like all over background patterns. It's a, it's a series of uh, four templates. And so we're gonna talk about those in just a few minutes. Um, but first I wanna show you this. This is the Trick or Treat Pirouette. And it is a, it's a six by eight stamp set. So you can see how big it is, 38 stamps in total. It is specifically designed for use with your pirouette system. You know, in that it has, you know, little wreaths in here and it has all these little pieces that are great for building your um, your patterns. Um, and it, all, it has sentiments all coordinated. Um, but to be perfectly honest with you, if you don't have the pirouettes or let's say you have the pirouette templates and you don't want to do a spiral or, or a wreath or something, I mean, these are just stamps. So you can use these stamps for anything you want to do, you know, in, in crafting. So um, I don't want you to think that these are only for use with the pirouette. It's just that they are designed to work perfectly with it, but you can use them for whatever you want. 
And then we have the coordinating dies here that are, that are going to cut out, you know, those reeds. Um, it's going to cut out those sentiments, this, this beautiful, gorgeous uh, bow up here. Um, it's also going to cut out that, that, that wonderful um, uh, spider web. Um, a couple of the little accessory pieces, um, like I think this is the skull. Where's the skull? Hello, here it is. Here's the skull and I think the two ghosts that are here, it's going to cut out as well. Um, so it's, it's really, really cool. And then of course we map on the back, you know, which die goes with which one of those stamps. So, so we're, we're going to play with this. And what's funny as I was pulling things for this, it was cracking me up. I was making myself laugh. Actually, this is a card that I made, um, uh, to display at our trade show, um, back in July. And then it's kind of funny because when I sat down, um, earlier today to, to kind of fiddle around with the set and, and figure out what I wanted to do for tonight. I didn't realize it until I started gathering things, but I worked with the exact same color combination and I even grabbed, well, very similarly, I, I, I grabbed the same stamps, which I didn't realize I did <laughs> until I was pulling samples to show you. Now, I didn't design the same card, but I thought it was funny how I gravitated to the same colors and, and some of the same stamps. So I thought that was really funny. Um, Sherry is saying my HSN auto ship shows the joy as the next set. That is correct. Um, is that different from the peace and joy? Yes, it is. It is absolutely different. The pirouette sets that we did on HSN in the auto ship are 100% exclusive to HSN. So if you, um, if you have that auto ship, um, they are not the same as the, there, there is a Halloween set there and was it Halloween? Was it Halloween or was it fall? I think it was fall. It was a fall set. Yeah, it was a fall set. I think yeah, it was called Big Thanks. It was a fall set and a Christmas set. And they are not the same as these, as the Halloween set and the Peace and Joy set. Um, so here's the templates I want to show you. For those of you that are new to these templates. Now, some of you may have these templates because we had them in a kit on HSN. Some of you may have purchased... Um, these templates separately at, you know, your local um, store, your favorite store um, online through our website. Um, we are currently sold out. We do have more on the way. Um, I know a lot of stores are selling out of them because they're incredibly popular. And um, I'm just, I mean, we're literally just waiting for the truck to show up <laughs> with these things. Do um, think they were picked up in Detroit? Oh, oh, huh? <laughs> no, not right? these. These oh, these aren't true. in that shipment. We don't know where these are. In. No, that shipment. Alan's talking about the shipment of these little howdy doos. Um, yeah, the Stampendables that we've been out of for a, quite a while, and a lot of stores have been out of. These have actually been at forty five minutes from us for a week now. <laughs> They've been um, in in a warehouse, um, a. a, a trucking company and warehouse uh, uh, near our airport, which is literally 45 minutes from us. But then there's all these processes. They, they were in a, a, in a truck. What do they call it? A cab? Trailer. They were in a, when, you know, when, one of the trailers. Isn't that what it is? Yes, yeah, the trailer. Tra yeah, a what? Tractor trailer. Yeah, tractor trailer. It's one of, the, you know, one of those big trailers that's on the back of the, like those big you know, trucks that haul things that you know, ship stuff. Um, and, um, anyway, it's been there for a week and it's because of every, whatever, I won't even go into it. You've heard me complain about it. So, um, we are expecting these to show up at our door any day, um, hopefully sooner than later. Um, anyway, so those will be back in stock everywhere soon too. Uh, and these pirouettes are, um, it's probably going to be a few weeks, Alan, before we get the pirouettes in. But I would encourage you, there are a lot of stores that have these. If you want to know, um, you know, what stores or which stores around the country and in Canada, um, you know, as well. I mean, there's, there's some stores that we even have listed. It's in our store locator. If you go to our website to about and then store locator, we've listed stores um, that we know of that carry our products. Um there may be stores that are that carry our products that aren't on that list. The ones that are on that list are the ones that we ship to. Um, so if a distributor is shipping to a store, you're not going to find it on that list. Anyway, it will say that you get four templates, and you do. You get four templates. But this has been a little bit of a con bit of a confusing point for a lot of people. People think we're going to have four pieces in here, and we don't. It's four templates. 
but three pieces because one of the pieces is double sided and it has a template on the front and then it has um, the background template on the back. All right. And then the, and these two are solid. You don't see through these because you don't need to see through them. But the other two templates, let me put this over here. The other two templates are, are see through. So we have the pirouette circles uh, stamp alignment template. That is uh, your third template. And then your fourth template is the spiral stamp alignment template. So um, the two that we're going to be working with today are going to be the pirouette master template and the pirouette circles stamp alignment. So I will tell you this for anybody who's wondering, question comes up all the time. Do I have to have a stamping tool uh, to use this? Um, I would say, do you have to? No. I can't imagine using it without one. Is it highly recommended that you have one? Yes. Is it going to work much easier if you have one? Absolutely. Could I show you how to use these templates without um, a, a stamp alignment tool? No. Um, because it's, not desi it's designed for use with a stamp alignment tool. But if anybody wants to figure out how to use it without, you are welcome to do so. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> oh boy. Angie's a little sassy tonight. <laughs> okay. So I want to show you how this works. And um, so I use this with the um, the larger, this this one happens to be a Misty that I'm using. You can use the Crafter's Companion one. I mean, there's several different ones. Basically, what you want is something that's going to allow you to either move your, you know, your template around, move your, you know, your, your paper around, um, but is going to keep your stamps in the same position. All right. Um, the crafter's companion works just fine. If, you know, if you want to leave your paper in place and rotate the stamp or, you know, the stamp around with it, because the, the top of that one comes off the whole, the, the, the stamp positioning portion of it isn't connected. So it doesn't matter to me if you're turning the, the if you're rotating, you know, the stamp around or if you're rotating the paper around, um, you just want to be able to position them, um, you know, properly with, uh, with, with some sort of an alignment tool. So this pirouette ma uh, master template has all these little measurements on it, which can look confusing and it looks, you know, like this pretty little rainbow, but there's a purpose to it all. So for those of you that are new, if you look just at the red ones, these little red arrows here, th this is actually an eight point star. Now mine is pretty worn because I use it a lot um, and I've got glue on it and stuff, but you can see there's a line that crisscrosses and makes an X here. Then we have one that goes through the center and one that goes through the center, um, both vertically and horizontally. It's basically an eight point star. And so at the corners of the tips of those stars, this one happens to be at four and a quarter inches. That's where you're going to see the red mark. We come in a quarter for the gold mark, that is four inches. Then we come into three and a half for the green, three inches for the purple, and two and a half inches for the brown. That, that is important information because when I'm positioning my paper, I'm going to always follow the same color. So if I position my paper in the corners for the four and a quarter here, when I rotate it, I go to red, and then I go to red, and then I go to red, and so on and so on. Um, I also want to cut my paper to whichever you know of these sizes is going to work. So anywhere from two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a quarter. Four and a quarter is going to be your A2 size. Now, typically we would, you know, I would show you how to do this in a square. So here's an example of a Christmas card that I did, and I used a square. So this is one way that you can use it with a square. But notice this one uses an A2. If you're using a square, the square is going to fit in all four corners for positioning. If you're going to use a rectangle, you only need to position the top two corners. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, and I'm also going to show you how you can do this, you know, without so much dimension on it, which, you know, the dimension is really fun. But if you want to make a really, you know, quick and simple card, we're going to do it without dimension. So um, I grabbed one of my, my A2 um, uh, card bases here or uh, card toppers. Uh, that one is cut to, uh, to four and a quarter. I'm actually going to reduce that down to four inches. So I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch off of both sides. 
I'm doing both sides so that I keep, you know, the, uh, you know, respective dimensions all around. Okay. So I've trimmed a quarter of an inch. So now I'm going to, I always like to position my little magnet so it holds it down. So now it fits in that four inch marker. All right. One thing that I like to do is put a little bit of adhesive on the back. This is how I do it. You may choose not to. I'm actually removing some of the tackiness. That's all I'm doing here. I don't like it when things are really tacky. Don't you wish you could do that? I, <laughs> don't I wish I could do it with you? Is that what you just said? <laughs> Remove some of the tackiness. You're funny. Linnea you are is funny. Linnea is out there, by the way. Oh, hello, Linnea, my darling. Hello, hello. Okay. So, um, Linnea is there. If you guys have some questions, she may be answering them. Um, okay, so I'm going to position my two corners in the four inch marker. Now, the next template, I like to use these together. Notice it has those little red arrows. See the red arrow? Red arrow. I can line those up with the arrows on the master template. All right. And I'm going to put my magnet down on it just so I know it doesn't move as I'm talking to you. Now, the way this works, notice we have all these circles here, all right? We have uh, the little green dotted line and then we have the black um, dashes. It doesn't matter if it's green or black. We really do that just so that visually it makes it easy for you to move your eye around the circle and differentiate, you know, know, know where you are. So four inches is going to be this, the, oh. the what? I'm sorry. What? Sorry. I'm going to have to touch my answer. Oh, okay. So four inches is going to be the dashed line. Um, up here you can see three and a quarter is going to be that dotted line. And then three and a half is going to be the dash. So if we made all of those black dashes, first of all, it would be a little nauseating. And it would also be difficult to follow the lines around. This way we have a separation, makes it easier to follow. It's just visually more pleasing and easy to read. So that's why that looks like that. Um, this is going to help you position where your stamps are going to go so that you know if they're coming in too far to the center, if they're going out too far to the edge, you're going to make sure that they're going to stay within your paper. Okay. So if I didn't have this here and I laid a stamp down, let's say I just, you know, let's say I just popped a stamp down if I didn't have this here and I just started going, well, hmm, let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to place my stamp. I'm going to place it here. Okay. Well, when I lay this down, actually, that's not a good way to do it because it's lifting it up. But let's, let's say I placed it here, okay? When I lay this down, you can see that it's coming like out of that edge. It's going just over that little bit of an edge. I don't want to lay it down because it's going to pick it up. It's sticky. But if I lay it down on top of that and I use it as a guide, then I can make sure that I'm lining things up properly. So that's the reason for that. Um, let me get something out. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, so if I look at these, let me put this one back because I just kind of grabbed and made a mess. Um, I love these stamps. They're so pretty. Let me flip this back over so it's easier to see. I'm going to grab this one right here. So when I started, when I decided to work on this, I thought, you know, I really love these colors. Let me grab the colors I chose to show you. I think they're really pretty. I like non-traditional colors. So here I have this. I love purple for Halloween. Absolutely love it. And I actually love pink for Halloween, too. You can see that in the paper pack that we have out. Um, right now, it's uh, it's the, the trick-or-treat paper pack. Anyway, so I love black and purple together. And then I thought I would bring this kind of, you know, it's called Tropical Sea. So that's kind of like a... In you know, like an aqua, like a deep, it's not a teal, it's like a turquoise. It's really, really pretty. So this is the color combination that I'm going to be doing. Um, so in doing this, I decided I didn't want the black color to be really heavy. Um, so I didn't use one of the bigger stamps for that. I used this really pretty um, little leafy one. And um, just to make it easy... I'm going to have this go straight. I'm going to have this, I'm you know, I, I, I can put it right on the line there. 
I'm actually going to curve it. I didn't do this on my sample, but I'm going to curve it because I think it'll be pretty kind of curved. So let's try it a little bit different than the way I did my first one. Um, and I'm going to watch here. I'm going to stay within that three and a half inch line um, because I want to have a little bit of an edge um, on my cardstock there. So that gives me that little bit of a guide that I was talking about. So pick that up. This is why you want that stamp positioner. Now you're going to watch. Now we are going to be making some turns here. Um, this part can get a little tedious. I'm not going to lie, um, but it really is easy. Lift it up and I'm going to make a turn to the next set of golden um, little arrows. And I just make my way around. Now, if you want to mass produce these after you make the first one, so you design it first, and then after you make the first one, it's super easy to mass produce them uh, because you can just lay your stamps right over the top. And I'll show you that when we get to the end of this. So you're just going to make eight turns. And the really cool thing too is, you know, we have all these stamps in here. They're, you know, different sizes, different widths. Some are really slim, some are longer, some are shorter. Um, and it really gives you a great variety to choose from. And, you know, no matter what combination you come up with, you're going to, you're really going to come up with a unique look almost every time. And another cool thing is, let's say, whoops, I got it taped down. Let's say you were to get both of the sets, all right? Let's say you have both the Trick or Treat and the Peace and Joy sets. If you notice this, that doesn't necessarily scream Halloween, right? This little shape, this leafy shape here. I can mix that into my Christmas ones if I want. And there's also some stamps in the, the, the Peace and Joy Christmas set that I can combine into this Halloween set as well. So the, you know, some of the images, if it's a pumpkin, you can still use it for Thanksgiving. Oh, Alan, you know what I don't have? Can you, I need this. I can't, I need my little, the, my moist towelette. <laughs> I just said, said one of the words that Ethan hates. And it wasn't towelette. <laughs> Our grandson has these has an issue with words that gross him out. I don't know, it's funny. So whenever he's around, we use them as often as we can. <laughs> yes, that is how we roll in the Hunt household. <laughs> so let me show you this. We've got two of these. This one I need to clean. Um, but they're actually, they look like the... Um, like that, like a witch's broom. This one is a little bit wider. This one's a little bit thinner. Um, I'm going to use the wider one. The other one, it, it, the other one is just as light and airy. Let me move. Here, let me do this. Let me move this out of the way because then you can see that's what it really looks like. It, let me move it over. See how pretty that is. Mine is just all covered in black ink because I didn't clean it very well. Um, anyway, I'm going to choose. I'm choosing to work with the wider one now. One of the things I really like to do is overlap the stamps because I think it just kind of brings them together and um, makes it look like they're all designed you know, together. So I'm actually gonna overlap this just a little bit. I think that's really pretty. So I pick that up, move my stencil. I'm going to get my black ink out of the way. That, that by the way, that I was using is the Raven. That's our Raven. Now I'm grabbing the uh, La La Lavender, which is my favorite purple. I love this purple. It is so purty. Purty, purty. Look how gorgeous that is. I mean, already, it's just, I love working with these. They're so much fun. This is something, you know, you can do this with your kids, with your grandkids. You could sit and make cards while you're watching TV doing this because you really don't have to think about it, you know, very much. So you could still be paying attention to your favorite show and um, and just kind of crafting along, making some Halloween, some invitations or just, you know, some, uh, you know, little cards that you want to maybe hand out, you know, to your 
like your kids' classmates or something, just kind of fun, you know, especially for little kids. I don't think my, oops, did I not? I don't think I, I didn't ink that one. I don't think my 17-year-old would want to make some, you know, take cards with him to school and hand them out to his friend. We need to suggest that. How would you feel if I used ink pads on the couch? How would I feel if you used ink pads on the couch? Well, I don't even like it when you have a sandwich on the couch because, like yes, or a tomato. Oh my goodness gracious, Alan! Alan is, um, you know, what's funny? He's not a messy eater. He's it, it, there's just there's just always a casualty when he eats, though. <laughs> Something always goes awry, and it's usually with like the last bite or two. <laughs> Food doesn't always make it into his mouth. Um, so, like, if we do, which we often do now, we oftentimes will, you know, gather in front of the television and uh, and eat instead of sitting at the table. Yes, I know it's modern day. We don't we don't sit at the table like we did when I was growing up, um, but it's comfortable. Um, so we've, we have learned that we have to put like a, a, a long blanket down and cover, you know, at least the cushion that, that he's sitting on. So we had this one day, I don't remember what we were eating. We were eating something and I thought, you know, I'm just going to be really careful and I'm going to put this, this blanket down underneath me too. Um, oh, and I had my computer. I was working, you were eating. And, um, anyway, there was a third cushion that was the casualty and your computer. yeah and my computer i'm sitting there working while he's eating something he had a sandwich that had half of a cherry tomato in it he bit down into the sandwich and the cherry tomato squirted all over me all over my computer and all over the sofa cushion the only cushion that it got on was the one that didn't have the blanket on it and we're talking red tomato juice <sighs> so you got to tell them the fix. Well, the the initial I fix was we're getting a new sofa. <laughs> um, I will tell you the fix in a moment. So let me let me let me you know go back to this. So I've chosen this really pretty little leafy. This this has got big leaves leaves on it. So I think it's or leaves on it. So I think it's really pretty. I'm going to position that so it kind of covers that little purple um, witch's broom and then that little black um, leafy one that I did there. And I'm going to use my tropical sea. Um, and I'm doing this without this. I got to make sure. See, I, I, I do that and then I go, oh shoot, do I have that in the right place? And I think I may have had it in too far. And that's another thing. I'm checking my alignment both around the outside as well as in the center. Because I don't, like this one, I, I went just a little bit in. So I don't want to go any further than that one in. I'm trying to get my head in the camera. There we go. I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. Something just dinged. Uh oh. All right. So now I'm using Tropical Sea. So I'm going to tell you guys how. I, I don't know where I read this, but I read this. And there are, I, I have these little facts that stick in my head. And I never know why they're there, why I hold on to them. Or when I might need them. Um, but um, I read somewhere a long, long time ago that if you have a stain on fabric, um, it can even be like a greasy stain because I've done this with, with, with different things that have gotten very specifically on the sofa cushions or on a pillow or something. Um, you want to get to it right away while the stain is still fresh, while it's still wet. You don't want it to dry. But you take uh, cornstarch and you um, just get like a little teaspoon and spoon a little cornstarch onto that wet stain or that wet mark, whatever it is, and just use the back of the spoon to kind of gently, you know, massage it into that, uh, that stain and let it sit for about 10 minutes, five to 10, I try for 10. And the cornstarch will actually lift all that moisture up away from the fabric. And I was holding my breath with this one because I didn't know if it was going to 
you know, lift it out of there, but still leave a red mark. And there were a lot of them. I mean, there was a lot. Apparently one juicy tomato. Anyway, it lifted it out. You can't even tell. You can't see it. It's just gone. I was, oh my goodness, what a relief. And it would not have been replacing one sofa. It would have been two because we have two sofas in that room. <laughs> Look at that little story and we're done. That is how awesome this set is. Little bitty story. Now, if you want to, this is where I told you, I promised you, I was going to show you how to mass produce this. Now, if I put this one down, okay, so you make your first one. Tell a little family story while you're doing it. And then I'm going to, I don't need my little stamp positioner for this, but if I take my stamps and I position them right over the, the places, right over the, the stamped images, there we go, just like so. But, you know, make like a little triangle, leave, leave some room. You don't want them right next to each other, especially when they overlap. It, it won't work if you, if you put them right next to each other. But if I position these now over my stamped images, and I collect all three of them at this point. All right. I can then put a fresh piece of paper down and yeah, that this one's not cut to size, but I just want to show you how it works. I can then ink because these are not together. I, oops, I just moved that one. Oopsie. <laughs> Let's pretend that didn't happen, but I can ink that one in black and then purple. And then that it, what is it? It's, um, it's the Raven, whatever, black, purple, blue, whatever colors you want. And I can ink all, I can stamp all three at one time, rotate, ink again, stamp, rotate, ink, stamp, and so on. And then you only have to make your turns one time, like make those eight turns. You just have to do it the, the one time and you will be stamping all three of those at the same time. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and that, that's how you can mass produce them. But you have to do the first, you create the first one first. And then you, you know, go from that. Does that make sense? Yeah, that looks awesome. Doesn't it look good? Yeah, it looks good. So, okay. Um, let me put my stamps back. Does everybody understand that or does anybody want to see me do that? Can you look at the comments, honey? He's over here looking at what I'm doing. Someone's saying great tips, so I think they did it. Okay, good. Okay, so from here, actually, I'm going to put that back because from here, I hope you guys like this. It's really, really pretty, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to change it up now, and I'm going to put this back because I want to know where my center is, and I want to put, I'm going to use this. I think this is the coolest stamp ever. This is our, um, um, our spider web. Now in the spider web, you can see like right where the center is. So actually, let me put this magnet in place. Make it really easy for me. I can see right through it. I can line that up. Oops, if it sticks to me, I'm done. Put that right in the center. That looks so cool. Now I'm gonna pick that stamp up. And then I'm gonna grab my, this is my Raven. Make sure that's pressed down. I'm gonna ink this a couple of times. I really want it good and dark. Yep, I didn't get the center really well. Make sure I get that really, really good. Gorgeous. Isn't that the coolest? I think it looks awesome. I love it. You like that? Yeah. Looks cool. <laughs> He's coming over to see it. I think it looks really cool. All righty. Next up. I know. I know. I know. Okay, so next up. I'm going to switch to my other stamp positioner only because it's smaller and I don't have a lot of space right here where I'm working. So I have the smaller one here. 
and I need the space. So I'm going to pop this in. No, I've got something on it. Arr. Okay, yeah, I'm going to need my eraser for that. Okay, so next up, I have got my clear embossing powder. I've got my little um, staticky thingamajig here. Thank you, honey. Um, my little static thing. So I'm going to get that static powder on there. Get my embossing powder ready to go. <laughs> Look at these little spiders. Aren't they the coolest little guys? I love them. These are the only spiders I like. These are the only spiders I will touch. So I'm going to put... I'm going to put one of them up here. And then I'm going to put the other one over here. Just put them in the web. <laughs> now, one of the cool things about a hybrid ink is you can use it for almost all of your crafting needs. That is my sales pitch. Um, but it's true, and that's why I use hybrid inks. So, um, you know, I can stamp with them. I can, um, you know, color blend with them. I can uh, solid stamp with them. I can color with Copics, alcohol markers, watercolors, whatever you want, but I can also emboss. So I have clear embossing uh, powder right here. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and collect these stamps. There we go. Um, 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 um. I've already used my little anti-static stuff. I'm going to go ahead and ink these up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to ink these a couple of times because I want them really good and um, you know, solid and a lot of ink on there. And while this is still wet, I'm going to put my embossing powder on. All right. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but it has actually stayed on parts of the web because the um, um, hybrid ink, you know, I, I did two layers of, of ink on that web and hybrid ink does take a few minutes to really dry. So even though I, I you know, set it aside or I, you know, went to these little spiders and stuff, that is still collecting, it's still holding on to um, that embossing powder, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and get this embossed. Here I have my little embossing heat tool here. I always like to let that heat up. I'm going to hit the back of it for a moment and then get the front. Just to help reduce some of the warping. the back of that. Now, you know, you can let this cool in something like this, like I'll put it underneath there and let that cool. So hopefully it'll flatten it out just a little bit as it cools. I, I'm going to be putting, you know, foam on the back of it anyway, so I don't really care. Uh, you know, I'll clean this up later. All right, here we go. So... Let me get excess that stuff off of there. So here we are. Isn't that the cutest thing ever with those little spiders? I don't know if you can see it shining. Alan, can you come into camera three? Okay. It's just really, really cute. Can you see it shine? Is it picking up the shine? I don't know. All righty. So from here, um, let's see. Where's my, st oh, let me put these away because I will forget. And then I will be wondering where my little spiders are. And I will be unhappy when I can't find them. All right, close that, cover that up, set that aside. Next up, let's see. I've already done a little bit of the work. For the rest of it. So I went ahead and I already stamped and cut. Let's see what I have in here. 
I've already stamped and cut a couple of those little, what are they called? Ghosts, ghosties. They can't find one of them. <laughs> where did my ghost go? Me still hunt. Yes. I don't know where my ghost went. Ah, there he is. He just popped out. He was hiding. It's because he's a ghost. I couldn't see him. <laughs> okay. And then I just, I grabbed some purple cardstock that I just happened to have in my stash. Um, I am going to clean this up. I got, looks like I got a little bit of, an, of ink on there. So I'm just using this little eraser, which is a little mono sand eraser just to clean that up because it will drive me insane. I always wonder, how do I get those little things on there? And I don't know when it happened, how it happened, why I didn't notice it. All right, now it's gone. So, problem solved. Isn't that cute? I think it's so pretty. So, this was cut to uh, five and, what is it? Five and a quarter by four inches. Um, my A2 card base, this is just a half a sheet of, of, um, of paper. Um... Oh my God, did I get my head in the camera? Alan, can you go back to the other camera? This is just too close. Okay. This is just an A2 card base. So this is a half sheet of paper scored at four and a quarter. So it is eight and, what is that? Eight and a half by eight and a quarter. <laughs> eight and a half by five and a half. Oh my gosh. I am like, what is it with me tonight? How old are you now? I don't know, but I'm sweating. <laughs> I didn't bring your fan. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I, I'm very frazzled today. I don't normally like get like this. And the more mistakes I made, the more frazzled I'm getting. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. <sighs> All right. I might have to just totally delete this one <laughs> when I'm done. All right, I'm gonna put this card up on foam here. So this one, this is this is the one we trimmed a little bit off. I have my foam here. Look how small that's getting. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm flustered. So, ah. All right, I'm just, I, I don't know why, you know, and I'm like dropping stuff. I'm dropping foam. I'm all over the place. So let's put a few of these down. Try not to cut myself because that just seems like this would be the time I would do it. God, I've got a mess. All right, this one is a little bit too long. All right, what? Huh? Oh, I thought you were laughing. No. All right, so even if you do have some, you know, if, if like after you use that uh, that heat gun, if it warps a little bit, you know, once you put adhesive on the back of it, um, it's, it's gonna be fine. It's not like it's gonna warp so bad that you can't do anything with it. But I do think it helps a little bit to heat both the front and the back. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay that flat down. Or maybe I'll put that up on foam. No, I'm going to put that flat. Onto the card base. And this one is trimmed in just a little bit as well. I'm looking in the camera to see if I have this positioned right. I think I do. I think I do. I think I do. There we go. And then I've got these little guys, which are also going to get some foam. So let's see. Is that a smiley face? That is a smiley face. Oh my gosh, we're going to probably lose his eyes soon. Okay, where is the start? Here we go. Let me just get a few little pieces of foam here. There we go. 
Piani's here. She's watching me make mistakes all over the place. Yeah, Will. <laughs> Is Will laughing at me? Yeah, he's, uh, he's abusing me on and off. <laughs> well, that I, I can I, I, I can approve that. That's, <laughs> that's all right. I'm good with that. I saw Piani when he was talking. So here, all I did, I, I'm not even telling you what I did. Oh, my gosh. I think I was a novice today. So I went ahead and stamped Happy Halloween. And we have, where is it? Oy, oy, oy. We have a die. I love that there's dies in here that cut out the sentiment. So this one happens to cut out the Happy Halloween. Halloween. Did you see it? Happy Halloween. So cute. And so I pop that up on foam. That's going to go right here. Try and center that. I'm not going to put it too far at the bottom because I like to have a little bit of space. And then for these two little, um, what are they called again? Ghosties. Let's give them a little bit of foam too. Pop them up. Because I just have, love having dimension. So I don't have any dimension on my wreath. But I am going to have dimension on my little ghosts. So let's see. So I, this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to tell you what's going on in my head. So I've positioned a spider up here, kind of upright, and then lower left. So I don't want to do upright and lower left, I don't think, with the ghost. Because I think it creates a line that goes that way. So I want a little bit of balance. So I'm going to put this one here. And then I'm going to put this guy, like, right here. I think that's kind of cute. And then we'll have this other one down here. So cute. So cute. And then, of course, if you want, you can put a sentiment on the inside as well. But it says, Happy Halloween. I just think it's adorable. I love it. So pretty. Yay. And that's it. That is it, my pretties. <laughs> I don't think we have time for another card, but I do want to show you. Um, this is the one that we did today. This is the one that I showed you earlier that I did um, for the trade show. And same color combinations, but completely different looks. And I thought, wow, that is so cool. I just love them. I think they're so, so, so pretty. I use the exact same stamps in the background, the three stamps. That's what you're seeing back there. This one, I added um, one of the wreaths. It's uh, this wreath here. And then I cut it out with the die. I have the two ghosts are the same, but I grabbed a couple of, I stamped this star here twice. And I, I just hand or fussy cut, hand trimmed that because we don't have a die for that one. Um, but this beautiful bow, which I love. Imagine that if you, you know, that is a gorgeous bow to use for any holiday. Actually, I, I mean, you do that in a beautiful gold or red or whatever and it'd be great for you know christmas or you know pretty pinks or something for easter red for valentine's day i just think it's super super pretty um here is another example of a circular wreath very pretty um this one isn't necessarily a wreath but this was this was actually done with the spiral isn't that just the coolest thing this one comes right down into the center this does use the spiral that's how I know it uses a spiral because it's right in the center. When it comes, when the stamps come all the way in, it's kind of hard to see it. I can see them because I'm really close up with it, but, but um, that's how I know it was done with the spiral. Um, so that is um, a couple of examples with the Halloween. This one you already saw with the Christmas. Now the Christmas set, this is the Christmas set here. This is called Peace and Joy. This one also has a bow, but it's a different bow. Really, really pretty. Um, and then this one is, um, this one shows how you can do a background pattern and we use the, uh, the Christmas with that. I think I'm going to show you how to do a background pattern, uh, next week. Cause I have one that I started that I, I was messing with. I, I didn't know if I'd have time to do it today, but this is another example of another background pattern. So this one is using, uh, smaller stamps and, um, this one is using bigger stamps and not at all worrying about whether or not they overlap, which I think is absolutely stunning. That one also uses, um, where is it? That is done with this pirouette um, 
background bonus template. That's how you do those backgrounds. So we'll do something with that next week. Uh, really, really fun. Really, really beautiful. And then this one is another spiral. Really pretty and very non-traditional Christmas colors. So we will tackle some of these. We'll, we'll, we'll do some of these next week. And I think that'll be really fun. But um, here is uh, my take on two Halloween cards that I think are just gorgeous and obviously are my favorite Halloween color combination this year, I think, since I've chosen it twice without realizing that I was duplicating. So, Alan, you want to take us back to camera one? Yep. So, <sighs> sorry, everybody, for all my mistakes tonight. <laughs> my head's kind of all over the place. Um, so, Alan, how are we doing on, um, on quantities for the Halloween stamp set? Which? The, the trick or treat, yeah, this big trick or treat one. Uh, Are we running low on it? We're running low on all the purines. Yes. Okay. Especially the, well, I think the Christmas one's out, right? Yeah, the Christmas one is out. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out what today's giveaway could be. And I'd... There are not many of them. Okay. Many. All right. Well, then here's what I think we should do. So we'll stick with the, we'll stick with the... Halloween theme. Do you want to grab the other Halloween? Did we do a giveaway with those already? The other trick or treat stamps and dies? Um, uh, 3338. Huh? 3338. The one, the dogs and cats. We just did that one, didn't we? Wasn't that the giveaway last week? Okay, then you know what? Here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. We'll make today's, let, let's make today's giveaway the Halloween paper pack. So we're still sticking with Halloween. We'll do that. Do we have these? We have those and we have some of the old ones. Let's do this. We'll give away, today's giveaway is going to be two paper packs. We'll do the Halloween and the Peace and Joy. Give me the Peace and Joy. We'll do that. Why don't we do the Halloween and help me? Where might it be? The Peace and Joy, it's over there somewhere. <laughs> sure it is. We're so disorganized. <laughs> I think it's right there in that stack right there. This one. Yeah. Okay, so here is today's. Because we just got to restock. Yeah, we just got a restock of these in. I just want to make sure that we have the stock, that we have the prize that we say. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like. So, all right. So today's giveaway is going to be one each. Okay, You're, the winner is going to get both of these: the peace and joy and the trick or treat uh, six by six paper packs. So, if you haven't already gotten a comment out there, get one out there because Mr. Hunt is going to draw a name. Ready? Give me a name. <laughs> this is just, oh. You would think this was our first time doing this tonight. Actually, I think the first time we did this, it went much more smooth than tonight did. <laughs> oh, I guess I gotta give you a name. Give me a name. That's what we're all waiting for. Who's the winner tonight? Well, this is more fun if they did great. Dun, 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 dun. What's the cost of airtime? Oh, what's the cost of airtime? It's my blood pressure. Will you please give me I'm a trying, name? I'm my best, you know, you can call the name out. You don't have to type it oh. so I can read it. All right, so I got to <laughs> Michelle T. M I C H E L E T. Michelle T. M I C H E L E T. Not Just be, the last. Not to be confused with Michelle P. <laughs> what? You're cracking yourself up. Okay, Michelle, last initial or first initial. First letter of the last name, Michelle T. You are the winner. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so Michelle, I need you please to send us send us an email to customer service at ldrscreative.com. We need your I would like to have your, your complete name and your mailing address so we can get your paper packs out to you right away. Oh my goodness. We're gonna have to set this one back to zero and do a retake on tonight because this is this is a mess. Oh yeah, yeah, Michelle, congratulations. Customer service at ldrscreative.com, and we will get your papers out to you right away. All right, everybody.
thank you so much for being so patient with me tonight for all of my my mess ups and ah! all right we will be back next week i don't know if it'll be tuesday or thursday i have no idea but we will send the message out the email out to everybody so if you do not get the email then you're going to want to go to our website on the home page and go all the way down to the bottom in the right hand corner and you want to subscribe to our daily inspiration because that is the list that gets the email for our YouTubes. Um, and we, we send that out about an hour before we go live. It's, it's always going to be either Tuesday or Thursday or both. Um, and uh, it's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, on YouTube, Facebook page and Facebook group, wherever you want to join us, we will be there. So everybody, thank you so much for being here. I wish you all a fantastic uh, weekend. Everybody here in the United States, you're going to be celebrating uh, the holidays. So have a wonderful weekend. Uh, have a safe weekend. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.